now I'm super excited because finally I'm talking about my own baby, the biggest baby of the family. This is my Marchesi Biscardo Amarone. Is the pride of Verona, is the pride of my family, is one of the pride of Italy. Italy when we talk about wine, of course. Uh, why Amarone? There is so much to tell about this wine. I'm trying to be very, very short. It's difficult because I can talk about three hours about this wine. Okay, Amarone della Valpolicella. Let's analyze those words. Every word on Italian label has a meaning regulated by the law. Amarone della Valpolicella. Valpolicella because, again, we are in Verona, the city of Romeo and Juliet, in the valley of Valpolicella. To make an Amarone, you need the same grape that you need to make a regular Valpolicella, which are, again, Corvina, Rondinella, and Molinara. Three indigenous, beautiful grapes that are grown only here in our beautiful valley. Now, what makes the Amarone so big, so beautiful? The fact that we harvest at the very beginning of October, but we don't squeeze the grape. We don't make the wine. We bring the grape into little plateaus, only one layer, so there is no grape on top that squeeze the grape on the bottom. So we take it, kiss it, put it down, take it, kiss it, put it down, and we lay them down on straw mats. And we let them raisin for three, four months sometimes. So all the rest of October, November, December, mid-January, the grape has raisin, has lost about 30% of the water, evaporates, and concentrate all the juice inside. The stem is all uh, uh, dry out, it is brown, it, it breaks like a breadstick. So at this point, we take the grape, we crush them and we pretend they're fresh. So we start making the wine with those raisin semi-dry grape. The juice is so thick that the fermentation is very long because there is so much sugar for the yeast to process it. So there is an intimate relationship between the juice, the skin and the yeast fermenting. It takes about 45 days to ferment all the juice and create an Amarone. After the fermentation, it takes two, three, four, five, six years of aging to make the real deal, the real Amarone della Valpolicella. Amarone. Amaro means bitter. One means big. The big bitter. Not because it's bitter, but because Amarone comes from something sweet, something that has been raisin, something that was fermented sweet like the Recioto, and then later, by mistake, it became Amarone. And so this is one of the most amazing historical mistakes. In my family, we make Amarone very traditional. Uh, we use only Corvina, Rondinella and Molinara because I like to reveal the real flavor of my valley. I don't like my Amarone to taste something else. I want my Amarone in the blind taste. You put your nose and you can see Verona. You can see the arena. You can see Romeo and Juliet. That's what I want you to, to experience. I mean, this wine is just thick and viscous, long, sexy legs. The color is unbelievable. The Amarone is deep at the same time as a beautiful garnet uh, layer. The nail, the nail is extremely long. The nail is what tells you about the glycerin, which makes it silk and soft on the palate. The nose is unbelievable. We call Amarone meditation wine. Why? Because there are so many flavors that what you want to do, you want to just sit down, relax, and smell. Smell and meditate. Because the more you let the Amarone talk, the more the Amarone will deliver flavor to you. Big, full, ample. He sits on your palate and never wants to leave. When he leaves, the Amarone is just hugging you like this. It's like a lady that, that makes you fall in love and then, and then caress you, kiss you and goodbye. The reason why I love this wine is because it's one of the most complex wine in the world, one of the biggest wine in the world with a very gentle touch. 
very finesse. So to me, Amarone combined the power, the body of Romeo and the kind, softness and elegance of Julian. It's a wine who was born for love and is a wine for lovers. Wine lovers and love lovers. So, 